First, we start with the Raiders offensive line versus Ravens defensive line. The Raiders offensive line has not been playing well. They have all the talent and have produced in the past, but that is not the case these last two games. The running backs have to fight just to get back to the line of scrimmage, and Derek Carr was getting harassed. This line should bounce back eventually, but I'm not giving them the benefit until they play like themselves again. On the other side, the Ravens have the talent on the defensive line, but hasn't produced recently. Brandon Williams has what it takes to win battles, but maybe they're just overconfident after the first two games. I'm giving the Raiders the edge here, but I really don't have confidence of either group. The Raiders have a higher ceiling and floor, so I give them the slight edge. Next, we have the running backs versus linebackers. The Raiders running backs have had to work to produce this year. Marshawn Lynch still looks like the beast mode we remember. The problem is, he's getting hit behind the line of scrimmage. Rashard and Washington are quicker backs and have produced when given the chance. This group has talent, but needs to be given the chance to show what they can do. The Ravens have what might be the best linebacker group in the NFL. Terrell Suggs is getting up there in age, but he's still producing at a high level. DJ Mosley is arguably the best inside linebacker in the NFL. They are fast and have great football instinct. The advantage here easily goes to the Ravens linebackers. Next up, we move on to receivers versus cornerbacks. The Raiders have a talented wide receiver duo in Cooper and Crabtree. The problem is, Crabtree is working through a bruised lung and Cooper has a major drop problem. I don't know what's going on with this offense. Cooper should be the number one receiver with his talent, but has played awful so far. Until Cooper rebounds and Crabtree gets healthy, I'm going to hold off giving praise to the receivers. The Ravens have very good corners including Jimmy Smith and Brandon Carr. They are two of the better corners in the NFL. Jimmy Smith is a Pro Bowl level corner and Brandon Carr has consistently played on the field. He might not be the best, but he's consistent and has played every week. The Ravens have been playing well on defense so far, so I'm giving the Ravens the edge. And now we have the tight ends versus safeties. Jared Cook has had a good start to his season so far. He's been the most consistent receiving weapon so far and is a mismatch every time. Lee Smith and Clyde Wofford each have had their moments and Lee Smith is an excellent blocker. He keeps opponents on their toes and his value is very underrated. The Ravens have the edge in this matchup though. The Ravens have Eric Weddle and Tony Jefferson. Both of these safeties are underrated throughout their careers. Eric Weddle is getting up there in age but has been playing well this season. Tony Jefferson came over from Arizona and the defense hasn't missed a beat. Finally, we have EJ Manuel versus Dean Pease. I've said it all season, the Ravens defense has what it takes to be one of the best in the league. They are not the problem with this team. EJ Manuel has been solid in his appearances so far, but this is on a whole other level. Manuel needs to manage this game and limit the turnovers, but Pease has the edge easy. Now we move on to the Raiders defense versus Ravens offense. We start with the lines. The Raiders defensive line has been surprisingly good so far. Mario Edwards Jr. has played well so far and Eddie Vanderdoss has been a pleasant surprise. But everything comes down to Khalil Mack. Mack has been on a tear and is a one-man wrecking crew. As for the Ravens offensive line, it's a shame they lost all pro Marshall Yonda. Tackle Ronnie Stanley is a solid tackle, but the rest of the line leaves a lot to be desired. Flacco is under pressure, but most importantly, the running game hasn't been going. The edge here goes to the Raiders. The line has been playing well, and it takes a lot to overtake Khalil Mack. Next, we move on to the linebackers versus running backs. The Raiders linebackers aren't overly talented but they have played well so far. Michael Lee, Nicholas Morrow, and Corey James have played well enough that you don't have to really worry about them too much. Bruce Irvin is a Pro Bowl level player who stepped it out last game after an awful start to the season. This group has played well this season and it's time to give them a little credit. For the Ravens, Terrence West and Janoris Allen aren't overly talented. The Ravens deployed them in a committee with each doing their own thing. They had a good start to their season, but have fallen off the last two weeks. Allen can cause the Raiders problems though. Joe Flacco loves to throw the running backs, and Raiders have had problems with pads catching backs. Still, the Raiders have the edge. They've been consistent through the season in the running game, while the Ravens have not. The Raiders' corners have played better than expected. It's four weeks into the season, so it's time to give them some credit. They played well against lower tier passing attacks though. Kirk Cousins was the only one to give them problems, and he has been on fire recently. They even held Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders in check last game. They should also get Gary and Conley back soon, and that's going to be a plus. The Ravens certainly have talent at wide receiver, but they haven't been doing much. Jeremy Macklin came over from Baltimore after getting released and was supposed to be the number one receiver. That hasn't been the case so far. Rashard Perryman is still trying to display the talent that he has as a first round pick. Mike Wallace is always a threat to take it to the house, but he's really only a deep threat and not really a good route runner. This group is talented, but the Raiders have the edge. The Raiders have produced over multiple weeks and surprised everyone. As for the safeties versus tight ends, 
the Raiders safety duo of Reggie Nelson and Carl Joseph are playing well. Joseph especially is having himself quite an excellent start to the season. He's played well in three of the four games and is a real help in the passing game. Reggie Nelson seems to have lost a step, but is still playing at a high level. He's not what he once was, but he's still a solid player in the league. For the Ravens, Benjamin Watson is a veteran and knows how to play football, and Joe Flacco loves to throw to his tight ends. The Ravens have tried to load up on tight ends recently, but it just hasn't worked out one way or another. One example is Max Williams, who came in as a high draft pick, but is stuck low on the depth chart. The edge goes to the Raiders here. Tight ends have been held in check, and they must do that again this game. For the defensive coordinator versus quarterback, Ken Norton Jr. has not been a savior by any sense as a defensive coordinator. He has talented pieces to work with, but it has not gone well in his tenure. The defense has stepped up big time early in the season, and we have to see how they play as the season wears on. With Derek Carr gone for a bit, the defense needs to hold offenses to have a chance to win the game. Last year, the Raiders won despite the defense, but it can't happen now. For the Ravens, Joe Flacco has not been playing good so far this season. I trust him to produce in the playoffs, but he's been below average this season. He's thrown far too many picks and just hasn't seemed right. I'm giving the Raiders the edge here. If the Raiders play the defense they played three of the last four weeks, they will do just fine. In conclusion, this is a tie in terms of check marks. The defenses have the edge each time. Therefore, I'm simply making this a head coach versus quarterback comparison. The edge obviously goes to the Ravens. Jack Del Rio is showing what he can do, but John Harbaugh has taken his team to the playoffs multiple times and won a Super Bowl. The same can be said for Joe Flacco. E.J. Manuel hasn't even started a game recently. Fair or not, Manuel is a backup quarterback and must keep the team afloat. 